just bombarding it then. There is a lot of people dying and ah, uh, but we didn't want it to turn into a demon world. Focus, frontline lead, defensive support, temporary wounds, absorbing attacks, and redirection. Master Tactician. A wizard of figure battle using their leadership and combat prowess, master technicians are able to harness the momentum of their party to enhance the combat effectiveness of their allies and themselves. Core focus scaling with the party's success, long term single target buffs, momentum and versatility. Grand strategist. Master battlefield position for the for themselves and their allies. The grand strategist is able to increase the battle effectiveness of their party by designating and strengthening important parts of the battlefield. So uh I'm gonna go Vanguard. Wow. Okay, so we're going Vanguard. Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunters are method methodical killers who leave trails of dead bodies in their wake. The Bounty Hunter chooses their next target before the previous one has even realized it's dead. The core focus is critical hits, defense, reduction, killing any killing key targets and repositioning. Uh always in the thick of battle we've read that one arch militant notch militant is a formidable master of warfare able to blend various weapons and style mid-combat be it melee or ranged or anything in between notch militant is best at it and becomes stronger and stronger with each second in battle core focus for versatility large area attacks personal buffs Ooh, i think mm, I think I'm going for that one. I think we'll be versatile. Here. Assassin. Assassins are masters at identifying the slightest vulnerabilities of key targets and dispatching them by any means necessary. So the core focus here is high damage, dodge, and dodge reduction. Then we've got bounty hunter and grand strategist. I can't really imagine him being a, an assassin. I'm gonna go Grand Strategist. So, wait. Oh, why was it? Why did it go? Uh, was that, did I have it? I don't know. Why did it have those? A supple force in front line, beacon under allies. Definitely think Vanguard for him. Wait, did I pick Vanguard for? I did. We'll go for Archmilla. I know we did that for her, but. I have no idea what I've done. What I've done. <laughs> uh, that was in freaking insane fight though. So is that? Did everyone just die? Keep your wits about you. Everyone just died. <laughs> That's rough. That's super rough. Everyone died. I don't think I could save everyone though. I think with the Chaos Marine just arriving, everyone was like, ah. everyone was going to be dead from 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 the go. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. Towers are awesome. I'm so gonna paint one of my minis like that. I'm so going to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm gonna look, see if I have one. I, I'm pretty sure I've already painted one. It's very similar. 
Um, but I'm definitely gonna be looking. I think I, I... I might even see if I can respray one. Do it all from scratch again. Thanks be to the Emperor, you are a lively relationship. We are most gratified by your return, and the crew is full of zeal to carry out any orders you have of them. Uh, before anything else, I will hear an account of what happened to the system's son. The boxmaster falters, the Lord Captain. We saw a number of ships approach the sun, black creations of inhuman make, amalgam, am am amalgams, amalgams of sharp angles and edges. They surrounded the star and then... My apologies, but I struggled to find words that could describe that terrible sight. The Xenos made the sun vanish into the void. The interrogator closes his eyes to Grimm's Drakari. You see Albalad's expression change as if the shadow has suddenly fallen over him. He rubs his temple warily. As if we did not have enough troubles on our hands already. Would you care to elaborate, Henrix? Henrix. Henrix. Henrix gives you a keen look. I'm talking about Xenos, rogue trader. The Adari, one of humanity's most ancient enemies. More specifically, I am referring to the most cruel and devious of their kind. The design of their ships matches the description provided by the Vox Master. Like all Xenos, the Drakari are blight on the face of the galaxy, but their technological superiority is indisputable. They arbor and fear warp sorcery, which is why they rely on creations of their twisted intellect. Many of those creations are capable of things that seem akin to sorcery. They are unenlightened eye. The theft of the sun is one example of that, what they are capable of. Are the Xenos in league with the Aurora's cultists? We can rule out that possibility. The Drakari would never ally themselves with an arch enemy's worshippers. If I had to name one thing that humanity and the Xenos have in common, it would be a shared loafing for warp corruption. Henrix glances around. The situation calls for an immediate action, Titania von Schau. We can continue this conversation later if you wish, but right now, he guesses that the deck teeming with two, two tumultuous activity. I believe you should assume command. Well, what's the current situation on board? The navigator's sanctum is no longer empty, but the warp engine is still refusing to obey the engine seed. Without it, we cannot perform a warp jump. Pascal's voice buzzes anxiously from his box. It may be angry, or perhaps it is lamenting the injuries it has suffered. I will immediately initiate preparations for a prayer service. If the Omnisci grants me comprehension, I will appease the machine spirit of this vessel. Uh, why did you not send a shuttle to the planet for me? I do apologize, your ladyship, but we were unable to receive your request for evacuation. The box length was overrun with vile interference, screams, blasphemous hymns, and other equally sinister noises. Any who listen to the info, in, there, in, oh my gosh, I can't read today. Interference for the protected uh, period lost their sanity. Several dozen operators went mad, monitoring the boxcaster in the hope of hearing a voice. Each one of them waited in vain. And so, what is happening on the planet now? Our org operators are reporting numerous uprisings and other manifestations of the arch enemy's power at various locations on the planet. Based on the fragments of communication picked up by our box operator, there's practically no resistance being offered by the governor's forces. Millions of people are converting to the blasphemous final door to cult and masses and assembling in prayer circles. Do we have any hope in retaking the planet? I fear that Rykad Minoris is lost. The situation is deteriorating by the minute. We must leave the system as soon as possible. However, there are still people on the planet who have not succumbed to heresy and who are worthy of rescue. Besides a small number of our own shuttles, we also have the shuttle salvage from Starport. The dark eyes of the Sister of Battle flash. We must save as many as we can. This has all happened for a reason. St. Argenta, whose name I carry with the reverence and trepidation, is famed for saving the people of a dying world through the power of prayer. The god emperor himself sent a star from the heavens that lifted the saint and her followers up to the sky, away from corruption and death. We must do as she did, direct all our efforts to saving those people at this moment 
look to the heavens in hope of salvation. The lives of peasants are of little value. Our prime objective is to save the holy relic, the miraculous fusion reactor, and the electro priests who guard and tend it. Avalad Forest is brown. Every moment we spend in proximity to a dying world, we are putting ourselves at risk. Your life, Lord Captain, is far more valuable than any all of Rykwood Menoris. The Von Valancius dynasty cannot allow to perish, and so lamentable though it is, we must rule out the idea of any evacuation. Henrik's eyes, like two deep dark pores, are resolutely fixed on you. The world is doomed, and its inhabitants along with it. The disappearance of the star was the final nudge towards death, the final, the finale of the cult of the final dawn's plans. I once witnessed a similar event, a world that has surrendered to the servants of the arch enemy and permitted corruption to enter too deep. In this moment, millions of people are bowing down before those who promised them salvation, and they are willingly giving over their souls to chaos at a sacrifice great enough to bring forth a demon world. Our only hope of stopping this process is to retreat to a safe distance from the planet and conduct targeted bombing on the Electro Priest Monastery. If we blow up the reactor, a firm and mon monocular reaction will follow. The world's oxygen will evaporate, killing off the entire biosphere. In doing this, we will save millions of souls from a fate far worse than death, and we will save Rikid Minoris from becoming an outpost to the Argenema. Whatever fate you choose for this world, I urge you to make haste, Lord Captain. The planet is burning in raging flashes of crimson and purple, and I can see it even from orbit, as do I see that the storm is already upon us. With every moment that we waste, it grows ever more difficult and perilous to steer the ship through the warp's turbulence current. I'm with the lady on this. Enough talking. We need to get out of here while we still can. Something lurking in the depths of your consciousness bristles at the passing thought of saving people. Despite the horror you feel tastes, takes your breath away. It is as if you're planning to steal the prey of a mighty predator. The planet is already wrapped in a thread stretching out from the warp. It deserves to have a new master. Why can we not try to evacuate at least some of the people? For the simple reason that the transformation process will soon become irreversible and our sole weapon against it is useless. The energy released by the bombardment could stoke up the warp energies. I've never witnessed the aftermath of a bombing a demon world before, but there is enough evidence of such attempts for me to say with confidence that you do not wish to see it. Oh, which of the plants and habits can we evacuate? The nobles you rescued at the Stopper have given their coordinates of shelters where we can find surviving aristocrats and their families. As for Sergeant Melgar's troops, they will help to control the crowds of frightened commoners and prevent shuttles from being overloaded. Thanks to you, we have salvaged many shuttles from the Starport that we can now use. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. Uh, right. This is my deduction. Prisoners are prisoners for a reason. I'm sorry. But they're staying. This is this is my thing here. Um, if I save, if I save the commoners, what's the chances of accidentally bringing on board some cult members? I I don't know. Maybe 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 that won't happen. But what is the chances? All in all, if we do not destroy this planet, it's going to turn into an arch, a demon planet. I, I, I get that. That That's the main plot of this one. All in all, it's going to change into a demon planet. Uh, we don't want that. Because demons are bad. We don't want demon. No. Set an optimal course and carry out our orbital strike on the Electro Priest Monastery. I'm sorry, Pascal. Rykad Minorius must fall. 
Yes, Lord Captain, I will immediately inform the navigation and artillery decks of the impending maneuver. Henry inclined his head. The right choice, Lord Captain. May the sacred exterminatus cleanse this veil of corruption. The bridge is, up is in an upheaval. The Technomat's prayers mix together in a senseless cacophony while servitors work hastily to remove a hardened crust of sacred undulant from the warped engine components. In the middle of all the tumult stands Pascal with data slats clutched in his hand, seemingly disconnected from the flurry of activity around him. What's going on here? The warp sexton is not responding to commands. The ship's spirit is rejecting our prayers in anger. I am currently calculating a plea that might appease the noble spirits. Magus, if you do not bring the situation under control, we will perish. Act swiftly. Pascal shoots you a look of fierce pride and says with gravity. You are right, this is my temple. The Vox booms with power. Tech comrades, heed my instruction. The mayhem immediately has subsided and the crew's actions fall into some indiscernible logic. The Omnisai's servants start working in sync and when Harik clamor becomes a symphony of reports which Magos, Magos coordinates like a skillful conductor. Admirably done, Pascal. The Omnisai guides me. Prayers of the tech priests surrounding the coffin gate almost drown out the sounds of the bustling bridge behind you. Pascal pouring intently over the data slate in his hands extends a mecha hand right towards you. Please take your place at the coffin gate, Lord Captain. Uh, first explain what, what are we doing? I studied the data and discovered a machine node that has, was damaged as a result of the heretic sabotage. The functioning of the warp sections was tampered with and the ship's spirit aggrieved by this violation of the right of operation is now rejecting its calculations. I sought a way to rectify this error and I have concluded that your participation is necessary to do so. The cognitive system of this temple of the Omnisire is subordinate to the shell whose repository serves the machine we see before us, a machine created for you, for your predecessor, and one that uses the biological signature of dyna dynastic blood in its computation. Spirits should recognize the ship's mistress and submit to her will, should. Pascal speaks the final word with a slight tremor in his synthesized voice. That should sound a little less, <laughs> less than reassuring. Lord Captain comes from the crackle of Pascal's box, part belilgered, sigh, part interference. I'm still poorly acquainted with this void ship. The acolytes here have adopted their own customs for conversing with the machine spirits. They do not know me and they will express themselves in a little known dialect of techno lingua. I will trust in the only side that my analysis of the data was correct. It means we have a chance of appeasing the ship's spirit. Okay, I will step up to the cockpit gate. The huge machine in front of you is lit with dozens of vid screens, hundreds of lumens. The blinking lights and endless rush of symbols and digits on the green background make your eyes water and a vague sense of alarm shimmers, simmers <laughs> in the depths of your mind. Typical reaction of a layperson when confronted with a magnitude of science creation. Among the numerous controls, you see the mouth of the cyber gargoyle. A cyber. That sounds awesome. <laughs> the same as the, as as the gate in the war chamber. Pascal's voice becomes imbued with imperious force. Servants of the machine god, heed my command. Acolytes, prepare the incense of instrumentation for the liturgy of machine spirit prohibit prohibitation. Senior technomats recite the prayer to generate a current data report. Operations will be marked with the campanological protocol. Omnisire, rejoice. I must be informing you that for this purpose of safety, complete reassembly of the warp sections and updating of its data smith blessings are required. If it's not done, then at launch the volume of the aggregate's calculation errors could result in the destruction of the data groups. But as we do not have 100 hours at our disposal, we must omit this procedure. Pascal looks down at the data slat, slate in his hand. It's a minor deviation from the right of operation for the sake of a peace in the spirit. Well, what must I do? Place your hands inside the throat of the cognigated guardian, the cyber gargoyle which has then been assigned to guard the forbidden data groups. The dynastic blood extracted from your veins will serve as a key to the data core where the machine spirit dwells. 
To it, we will offer our prayers so that we may bypass the protective protocol for defective connections and launch the warp sexton. Pascal's voice grows quieter. The lords of the Omnisire know no exceptions, and so in this ritual, I will remain at your side to placate the rightful machine. Spirit, in those who abode you will be intruding. Follow my literary lord captain, and may we receive his blessing. Okay. <laughs> Deviated from the right of operation. That sounds dubious, especially coming from you. Oh, dogma bids that the appropriate rituals of cleansing and reassembly be carried out on the Warbeck Sexton. It is a long and labor intensive process. Pascal hesitates before continuing. Our best chance is to bypass the sacred prohibition on directly interfacing with the conduits of the motor force, a faster and less orthodox route. The lives of an entire crew now depend on my, on my convincing the ship spirit to start up a broken component. Is that right? Your interpretation is verging on tech heresy. However, given your rank, Lord Captain, I will nevertheless respond. For a layperson, you must have described our, your, our position with relative accuracy. Place my hopes in his revelations and humbly ask for his guidance. Uh, okay, I'm going to put my hands down the gargoyle's crook. Metal jaws clamps down on your hands, breaking your delicate corporeal sheath and releasing warm red liquid into its gullet. I, I, I hope she put the other hand in and not the hand that already has, you know, big holes in it. At the same moment, the image of the vid screen before you changes. Connecting. 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 Success. Reg. Access. Uh, reach out and touch the keys on the instrument panel. I don't know what this is, but yeah, we, we inputted something. Lord Captain Pascal stops and then continues more calm. Please, you will anger the machine spirit before we've removed the restrictions. Oh, okay, um, well, what does it all mean? At the sound of your voice, the cognitive servant whose bronze bound skeleton is built into the cognitive gate's housing shudders. And with a screech, his skull rotates towards you and then stops in that position. The benevolent code, a voice receptor, Pascal emits a sequence of Binharic signals and then is silent for several seconds. I hypothesize that the defect is located in the analyzer block. I register a reaction to the signal, but no post process response. Temporary override is permissible. The Magos intently studies the vid screen. The shell was created on the forge world, unknown to me, initiating the standard inner vocations of the machine spirit. Pascal leans over the adjacent instrument panel and sets his hands on the controls, and at the same time a quiet stream of machine code begins pouring forth from his box. Uh, by my authority, I revoke the inviolability protocol of the warp machine. One of the Cogton Gate's vid screens turns red. Pascal sees this and raises his hand, signaling to the rest of the tech priest, then withdraws the connector from his sleeve and connects it to the machine. Servants of the Omnisire, make now the offering of a cleansed data crypt to the machine spirit so that it may be filled with their true and calibra calibrated data. May the Omnisire have mercy on our souls. In meek solemnity, the acolytes offer up the cleansed data crypts to the warp engine, one after another, repeating prayers of exaltation. After anointing the contacts with sacred anogamants, Pascal inserts them into the Cockney Gate slots. Your head begins to spin from the holy sense's foul smelling clouds of smoke and from the loss of blood that the cyber gargoyle continues to drink from you and the world swims before your eyes. Let them let this mechanism awaken in new in a renewed purity. Pascal enters a sequence of commands and raises his head, watching the vid screen. Suddenly he stops dead. No. His fingers fly over the command runes, entering command after command. His mechandrite clicking its pincers pull at one lever after another. The vid screen fills with a string of symbols, completely incomprehensible to you, but clearly conveying something to the Magos. What is happening? After a few seconds, one of the data crypts mounted on the Cognigator begins to emit sparks. A moment later, another data crypt does the same. The next bursts into flame and gives off foul smelling smoke around you, and the Omnicide servants break off from their prayers and someone burst into fren frena frenetic pleading. Pascal Mourney grates out. 
The massive errors in the warp sextant's calculations are destroying the data repository. The offering did not appease the ship's spirit. The warp engine cannot be filled with the motive force. We are trapped. A moment later, the Magos continues uncertainly. Perhaps an alternative Ryzen protocol. On an emergency launch of the auxiliary core, the tech priest bends over the congregate, but something in his pose and movements reveals his desperation. While the other vid screens are filled with more and more strings of symbols, the monitor in front of you blinks and the static images changes. Pascal is too engrossed in his ritual to notice. Uh, read the information on the vid screen. Stab true. Stab false. <laughs> um, machine spirit, can you hear me? The Covenant Bay, this servant creaks quietly in its joints, a sound that is drowned out by the Benharic hymns and the tapping of commandments. Prompt, ping, wreck, rest, injury, rescue, query. Oh, hallowed machine spirit, in the name of the Omnissiah and the Emperor, reveal unto us your power and guard us from our doom. Pascal echoes your sentiments with the triumphant sound of Benharic hymn. Pascal's next vocalization goes unsympathized as he sees the vid screens begin to stabilize one after another. The strings frenetically galloping across the screen backgrounds are replaced with stable images of a regular updated status report. Only one monitor remains explicitly red. The tech priest's box crackles in shock, but his report is as clipped and clinical as ever. Registering warp sex and activated. Registering data stream stabilizing. Registering zero data errors found. Reporting warp engine is ready for translation. After a pause, Pascal adds, I am also reporting evidence indicating a category three miracle fulfilling the criterion. Thou shalt witness the mechanism that toils in glorification of its functions and in defiance of the activation. <laughs> Lord Captain, rather here. The crew are almost finished carrying out the orders given early and I've received confirmation from the engineering halls. I don't know what you did, but the warp engine is up and raring to go. We're ready to begin the translation to the warp, your ladyship. What just happened? I hypothesized that the ship's spirit heard our prayers and intervened. It summoned the power of the Omnicide to do something beyond my comprehension. I know little of the Omnicide's sacred machines, but what I saw on the screen looked strange. A non-standard output of information lost in the data core. Servitors use the data conduits are not always fully lobotomized. Fragments of their thoughts can appear even in pure code. Pascal falls silent and mercy thought. Mm -hmm. It appears the Omissire perceives and knows the power of your faith, Pascal. He will not have worked his miracle otherwise. I hope you will grant me a revelation that will allow me to comprehend the nature of this miracle. Pascal's box buzzes with wonder and an undercurrent of exultation. Lord Captain speaking, I will give the order to commence translation to the warp. Waiting for you to ascend the Captain's throne, Lord Captain. May the Emperor protect us. Whew. This is us bombarding it then. There is a lot of people dying, and oh, but we didn't want it to turn into a demon world. Valencia's flagship made its way out of the doomed star system. As the void shift plunged deeper into the Corona's expanse, the rogue trader's subjects bid a formal farewell to the late head of the dynasty, Theodora von Valencius.
Having paid their last respects, the crew gathered their strength and braced themselves for whatever was to come next. Master uh, Vigil, I don't know why I said her name. Lord Captain, allow me to report. Our journey through the warp has come to an end. Lady Navigator Sello informs me that we have reached a point where we can translate to real space in the Furbunda system. The Lady Navigator and her pilots are awaiting her permission to begin the process. The Furbunda system is home to Footfall, the only Imperium outpost with a functioning warp in the Coronas Expanse. The tech priests are begging you to have mercy on the machines worn down by the warp and to allow the servants of the Omnisire to inspect and heal the void ship's wounds in the dock. Prayers and rituals will take some time, which our astropathic choir will use to establish connection with the prime worlds of your protectorate, Dargonus, Janus, and Kiava Gamma. What is this? It's a powerful sanctioned psycho who can send and receive messages through space using Earth. Master Zachary Weiss has recovered the invitation previously drifted in the tower. I can't speak today. The Immaterium, the Legion of Football has humbly requested an audience with the rogue trader of the Von Valancius dynasty. According to Master Zachary, the message was tinted with shades of pleading. I quote, apparently the Legion is anxious to meet as soon as possible. Football, place where the filth and sanctity go hand in hand. Reverend Hieronymus Doloroso will most likely expect a visit from me. I imagine he'll be interested in talking to you as well, Titania Von Shire. I all believe in your voice ship when we arrive at Footfall, Titania Von Shire. Once that is done, consider the Lord's Inquisitor's task in complete. Complete, not incomplete. Your leadership, young Evain Winterscar has asked me to convey his gratitude for your hospitality and for saving him from certain death. Not wishing to outstay his welcome, he plans to disembark at Footfall. Lord of Vane swears he will not forget his debt to you. I hereby inform the rogue trader that during a comprehensive system inspection rite, this unit discovered data crosses within the captain's calculator that are concealed from prying eyes by means of a personal cipher and the sacrament of an algorithmic authorization. Unit Titania von Shai von Valantius has been added to the access list and assigned the identifier Keeper 2. The unit can access the data from the co captain's cockney game provided it should possess the decryption key. You've detected him to something resembling curiosity in Pascal's mechanical voice. Are you leaving us here? The arrangement between the Lord Inquisitor and your predecessor was that I be transported to football and no farther. I dare not take advantage of your generosity and patience any more than I already have to tell you about child. You're a skilled fighter. I could use people like you. What do you say we extend your stay in my retinue? Thank you for the offer, but I must decline. I am afraid my duty to the Golden Throne comes before everything else. That is a shame. <laughs> that is a shame. Gente, who is the Reverend Hi Hieronymus who wants to talk to me? He is the head of the Drusian mission of football and one of the most prominent clergymen in the sector. Paying him a visit is a good thing for any loyal servant of the Emperor to do. I insisted his mission before I assisted his mission before I joined Lady Theodora on her voyage. I need his blessing to accompany the new rogue trader of the Von Valantius dynasty. If you wish to have me aboard your voyage ship, I request that we meet with the Reverend Hieron. Uh, Victus, tell me about the system we are arriving in. Verbundus is a valuable due is valuable due to its close proximity to the Moor, the gateway of the Imperium. The system is mostly known for football. The main base of merchants, privateers, and rogue traders traversing the Corona's expanse. Additionally, the star itself is orbited by the Adeptus Mechanicus station, which is off limits to the outsiders. Alter Templum Calixes X 17. I had the honor of tending to this shrine for a few thousand cycles. I suggest you abstain from visiting it, as most tech comrades at the station are engaged in meditative calculations that should not be interrupted. Okay. Um, Abelard, do you know anything about the leisure football? La Dame 
Takara is very peculiar, young man. Consider your upcoming conversations a baptism of fire and footfall is political arena. Such things are not spoken out loud, but least Takara is the appointee of the Kasabalika mission, the large rob largest robber baron crime syndicate in the Calyx's sector. They specialize in cold trade for buying and selling of all kinds of Xenos rubbish. Cold trade? The illegal trade of commodities and artifacts of Xenos origin. Football was previously run by a liege who did business with several criminal factions at once, but he suffered an accident. The reign of power were picked up by the Vladeng Takara, whose pointed benefit not only the Kasbalika, but also their most powerful ally in the Coronas advance, rogue trader Calibus Winterscale. So that wasn't the rogue trader, then. that was just the governor. We haven't met with the, the, the big, big rogue trader dude i reckon he's the bad guy see the bad guy <laughs> uh bladame is a slippery yet very cautious fellow he doesn't usually beat around the bush and does not play mind games perhaps more importantly he is no fool bulls do not rise as high in the catabolican hierarchy give all of this in mind you are a rogue trader and you stand above him in status and wield considerable power Having said that, history has seen cases where the Caspilitan Warrens crossed swords with the road traders and emerged victorious. Do not forget that and remain vigilant. Casbalica vile texties, Pascal Fox barks out the last word like profanity. <clears throat> and why does the liege one see me so badly? Not you personally, he wishes to meet the rogue trader of the Von Valencia's dynasty. Takara does not know that Lady Theodora's death and is simply seeking an audience with the powers that may be. My god is telling me that something must be very wrong on footfall if our uh, astropath managed to read such strong emotions in such an annoying, an anodyne message. We have no information, Lord Captain. The broadcast from footfall astropathic choir was the only missive the Master Zachary has received lately. And um, so what do I need to know about footfall? It is the largest port and trading capital of the Corona's expanse. It has a dockyard that will allow us to inspect and repair the void ship, and it boasts its own astropathic choir, Corona's expanse communications nexus. Not to mention pirate hideout, smuggler caches, and forts belonging to a dozen gangs, groups, and factions. In the Corona's expanse, the Imperium relies on this as, a, as its outpost. Fringes of humanity's domain rarely resemble the central world, but so long as footfall serves the God Emperor, insofar as it can, it can be considered a citadel for the Imperium. Although I have heard that the, ti that the tips it sends are underwhelming, to say the least. Due to footfall's remoteness, it has developed its own rules and customs. Many of the goods that can be procured here would be considered heresy in the heart of the Imperium. Enough to warrant the summary executions. Moreover, footfall is the domain of the rogue trader, who transcends certain Imperial laws by virtue of the warrant they bear. So, football is just a brief stop. What's next? As soon as we solve the issues plaguing the ship and establish contact with the key worlds of your protectorate, the time will come for your uh, magne accessio, the official ceremony of donning the mantle of the rogue trader. It is mostly a formality at this point. You are already possess all the privileges granted by the warrant, and yet it is a major milestone in your personal history. The moment your name graces the list of heads of the Von Valancy's dynasty, we are all looking forward to that day, Lord Captain. Then tell the Lady Navigator I give her leave to make the translation from the warp into real space. It just begins ensuing instructions. The massive ship appears to change with her every word. The bridge is set in a motion as hundreds of people start to prepare for the ship to real space. A measured chanting fills the corridors to safeguard the vessel and its crew. Vidgis turns to you again. One more thing, Lord Captain. No one at the station knows about Lady Theodora's demise and you inheriting the title. Leech Tokara will be informed. It is required so we can use the dock. And besides, he is expecting a personal audience with the rogue trader. He will not meet with an unknown person of unclear standing. However, there is still the matter of announcing your arrival. You can either arrive on the station with the proper pomp and ceremony, or choose to visit incognito. I've decided to tell the liege I will arrive in incognito. It will be done, Lord Captain. They just bows again. With your gracious permission, I return to my duties. I think it would be good. Well, where are we go? <laughs> to to be quite quiet right now.
It's funny because I never really seen your your dude. Like I, I I did kind of I didn't really go looking for him I suppose. I'm wondering if we can. I wonder if Avalon has anything new to say. Lord Captain. Yep. Lord Captain. looks at you intently, head tilted. I know nothing about you, Heinrichs, Heinrichs, whatever your name is. Could you tell me a little about yourself? <laughs> I'm usually the one interested in the pasts of those around me, not the reverse. I come from a night world, Guizorn III. I belong to a branch of one of the noble houses until my exceptional abilities were discovered. After that, I was sent on a black ship to Holy Terror, where I was trained, and I began my service for the glory of the Imperium. Do you remember your home planet? I do, but I have no ties to my homeworld now. None except my first name. I left Guizorn III when I was still a child. My family disowned me, stripping me of my family name. I was given a new one by those who trained me. Even for a noble, being branded a psyker is a mark of eternal shame. I experienced that firsthand before I was put on the black ship. Tell me about the black ship. Picture a vast prison ship filled with frightened, angry psychers who can't control their abilities and who have just lost their homes and their families. Some of them were children and adolescents like I was. Some were monstrous creatures who no longer had the right to be called human, or psychopaths who reveled in their impure powers. Once, when one of the miscreants broke free, those in command simply depressurized the bay and got rid of the culprit, along with the prisoners and crew tainted by him. But even after that, I heard the echo of inhuman suffering and terror that filled that part of the ship. It grieves me to recall that episode to this day. How did you discover your abilities? Like many psychers unaware of their curse, I found out when a strong emotional reaction triggered an involuntary response. <sighs> My great aunt had a pet grink. One day, it bit me, and I boiled it from inside out. Oh, damn. And when my great aunt slapped me for what I'd done, I boiled her, too. <laughs> Don't get him angry. Got it. Got it. I don't want to really insult him you know, at the end of the day, but I expected a more dramatic story. <laughs> if I were to summon a demon or rain down fire on everyone's heads, we wouldn't be standing here talking right now. However, I took the life of a family member. In my opinion, that is more than enough drama. I mean, he's not wrong. So you were sent to the Inquisition straight after training? <laughs> no. First, I was accorded the status of a Psyker, fit for service in the Imperial Guard, where I then spent several years. It was only afterward that I became an agent of the Golden Throne. Stop it, clear not intend to elaborate further. Okay, well, let's talk about something else. Uh, so, how long have you served in the Inquisition? Since the day of my initiation as an acolyte. So, decades. How many real years it's been, it's hard to say. When I return from a journey through the warp, I often discover that much more or much less time has passed in real space. You visit, visited many worlds in your service, I'll wager. Indeed. I have visited many of the places brought to the Emperor's light, and those sullied by the filth of the Arch Enemy. In truth, even after all these years spent visiting the various corners of the Imperium and looking beyond its borders, 
I still consider the Segmentum Solar to be the greatest of all humanity's bastions. Nothing compares to the majesty of holy terror, the might of Mars, the grandeur of the Segment's other worlds. And for someone who's been in the service for decades, you certainly look young. The first step for biomancers such as myself is to take control of the processes of their own body, including aging. <laughs> I've endured innumerable hazards in my work. If I allowed every trace of them to remain, I would look completely different today. So he gets to completely cut out all the stress, you know, so, you know, if he gets really stressed out, he gets no gray hair. You know, if he gets really scared, he doesn't get scared. Ugh, no wrinkles. I need that sort of power. So what duties have you been carrying out as Inquisitor? You can't really be expecting me to answer that question, can you? No, but it would have been nice to know. Gladly. You're not the Inquisitor's only act like, correct? <laughs> of course not. The Lord Inquisitor's entourage comprises dozens of people. The best of the best. Experts in various fields and disciplines. Some of them I know personally. Others I have never met. To be honest, I'm not even certain that the people I know are still alive. I used to work with other acolytes of the Lord Inquisitor, but in the Coronas Expanse, I have been working alone. Wandering among the stars with our family and friends, don't you ever get lonely? I... <laughs> had never even considered such a thing before you asked. Hmm. Perhaps I do. Sometimes. You pay me excited. I don't know what the word last busiest look such criminal neglect of your needs. <laughs> your concern for my needs, Lord Captain, is extremely unexpected. Would you like to remedy my deficit of personal interaction? I would not be opposed to a pleasant conversation if you can find the time. I'm always finding the time to talk to you. <laughs> Um, if you're an interrogator, does that mean you hold a special position in the retinue? <laughs> we are not a retinue. We are acolytes. As for your question, I am closer than anyone else to the one I call my personal teacher. The Lord Inquisitor deemed me worthy of undertaking the most important and sensitive tasks requiring the attention of agents of the Golden Throne. Are there other acolytes in the Coronas Expanse? I kind of answered that already. The interrogator narrows his eyes and releases this point sigh. After several seconds of silence, you realize that you will not be getting an answer. <sighs> Such as? I must make my I can take my leave. anyone like waiting for me in here no I don't think so I just wanted like to I've been kind of looking around transactions with Chartist complete. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this this was fun. <laughs> I just I kind of just wanted to have a look, see if there was anyone 
wanting to chat, but no one wants to chat, so.